Hello and welcome. I'm Sue Palmer Conn, aka The Divorce Doctor, and I welcome you to Heart to Heart with The Divorce Doctor and Friends. Whether you or a loved one are considering divorce, in the midst of it, or coming out of it, this show is what you need to listen to. Divorce seems to affect everyone in some way. It can be an overwhelming life event, not only for the person going through it, but for friends and family of those divorcing too. We are here to walk the path with you, bringing you specialists who can make you, help you make better decisions, provide you with resources, and give you ideas about how to be your best self in a time that, quite frankly, can bring out your worst. And today, I'm so excited to be here with an amazing woman, Varsha Hathi. Varsha is also a divorce coach, and as an Asian woman, has experienced the stigma of divorce in that culture, and now helps other women who find themselves in that same boat. Hi, Varsha. Good afternoon, Sue. Lovely to meet up again. Thank you for inviting me to this. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm looking forward to it. So what, what brought you into divorce coaching? So I'm divorced myself. And when I was going through my own divorce, I really struggled to find help. Um, I've been to gingerbread men, I've been to a local community center, and uh, I, I couldn't seem to find the help I needed. And at that time, I thought that I, I want to be that person who wants to help people who are going through the same journey as me because I struggled to find help. And I'm sure lots of people out there uh, are looking for help and they can't find the right help because almost I think every time we think we need to go to a solicitor and there's no other solution. And when I heard of divorce coaching, when I started doing a bit of research and I heard of divorce coaching, I thought, that is what I want to do because I want to help people and help them with the emotional side because I, I am very passionate about helping people and I'm very good at, I'm, I'm compassionate uh, and uh, I understand that side because obviously I've been through the journey myself. Yeah, it, do, it does help, doesn't it? Having, having, you know, working from experience as well as um, expertise. Absolutely. And obviously then I got accredited uh, as a divorce coach and obviously that adds an extra touch to what you've already experienced because it's your own experience plus the training everything you know is yeah. is adding towards and hence the reason of becoming becoming a divorce coach yeah yeah i think i think most well i won't say all of them but quite a lot of divorce coaches either come through having been divorced themselves or having worked in the legal field or the financial field and feel the need a bit more? Absolutely. I think there are lots of divorce coaches who are past solicitors and they felt they want the emotional side and to support the client in a different way. And so they're becoming divorce coaches as well. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. So as I said in the introduction, you know, as an Asian woman, how did you deal with the cultural stigma of divorce? Oh, so as Asians, you're brought up to believe that, especially as a young lady, you ought to be under your father's control during childhood. And then when you get married under your husband's, and then if your husband was to pass away, you're under the control of your sons. So it's quite a different uh, culture, the Asian. We're slowly coming out of that, but it's extremely difficult to be an Asian and be divorced. Um, the stigma of divorce is still existent. Uh, people look at you differently. Some cut ties with you and some don't want any association with yourself. It is counted, you know, as a failure. And you'd have to, you, it, it, it almost feels like you're bringing shame to the family, uh, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be the case. And as a divorced woman, they, people look at you as seen as flawed. You're unable to get on with your husband, they feel, and your in-laws. And you are the problem, you know, it's not that anybody else is, you're the problem, especially women. But I think in the general Asian community, whether you're a man or a woman, there is a cultural stigma attached to it. And it's very hard to then come out there or even make the decision of a divorce because you know what you're going to face, the community, the society, and people don't want to know you. It's a label, you know, yeah. it's attached to you and it's sad. Yeah. And then I suppose on top of that, if a woman is in an arranged marriage and wants or needs to leave for the marriage for any reason, you know, that, that's even more difficult, isn't it? You know, what, what sort of steps could or should she follow? 
Absolutely. When you're in an arranged marriage, it, it is much harder to even think of divorce. And some some people are in this country, uh, UK, when they don't even have any family here. So it's much, much harder. So I would really suggest to them that um, first and foremost, they really need to make sure that they have support in place, whether it's family, friends, uh, a divorce coach, for instance. You need to make sure that whatever you're going to do, you, you've understood the steps you're taking, and also to make sure they have all the documents in place because quite a lot of um, the people who go through divorces, especially in arranged marriages, and they've not dealt with the finances themselves, the women especially, uh, we tend to find that the husbands that start hiding assets away, and mm. so it's really important to start gathering the documents while you're still in the house before you file for divorce. And also to have your support team in place, whether it's um, you know your family, your best friend, uh, a divorce court, somebody from the community, if you can find somebody to support you, that would be, that would be really great. But making sure you have all the documents, you know, in place so that if somebody starts hiding assets, then you're aware of it, you know, make sure you've got all the documentation on your pensions and all your assets and liabilities, really, because you don't want to get caught out. Yeah. I mean, with, with, I know, you know, one of my clients was in an arranged marriage and she had brought a very large dowry with her, mm. which her husband then took charge of, and his family. Yes. Took yeah. charge of. So she had no access to funds. Most of the arranged marriages, when, when us Asians uh, sort of get married, you, you come with a bit of gold. It's part of the culture, part of the thing. And most of the times, if you're living with your in-laws especially, the in-laws uh, take the gold and are in charge of it. Um, initially, not in a bad way because you want to have security. It's placed in a nice security box or whatever. But you soon realize in an arranged marriage then that if you were to go for a divorce, that becomes quite a, quite, quite a complex uh, problem because they, they give you a hard time giving that back to you or whatever you brought. Uh, in lots of the Asian communities, you bring... Um, bed covers, you bring lots of things like a car, uh, maybe furniture even. And obviously this is going to become a struggle because they're going to give you a hard time giving it back to you. Yeah. So I think it's very important when you get married to sort of be aware of all these things. We're not saying everybody's going to go through a divorce, but sort of being aware that these are the things you need to be independent and sort of learn to sort of monitor all these things in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's so very important for women to be independent, I think, in the Asian Absolutely. Community. Learn a little bit of finances, even if they're not doing it on a daily basis, to be aware of how much the mortgage is, where the mortgage is, who the insurance company is, even if your husband's doing everything. It's good to be aware of things. Well, that's right. And, and, and also to try and build up their own credit rating. No, absolutely. Because a lots of people who are in arranged marriages. Some of them are not even allowed to go out without permission. Most of them have joint accounts with their husbands or either they, they give them money to their husbands and they have no access to this. So yeah. it's like you said, building the credit rating is very important. So having your own account or even if you're in a joint account, making sure that you're building your credit rating. So if you were to go for a divorce, you know that things are going to be okay because your credit rating is okay. And there's always a solution. I think people feel um, there's no solution because they, they're, they're fearful. They're, they don't know what the afters are because they don't know the finances. I think finances are very um, important in divorce. And if you're not aware of it, it makes you very scared and vulnerable because you're not sure how you're going to handle things. But as you make yourself more independent and you know your credit ratings, I think then it's easier to sort of deal with things than you think. I'm sure there's a solution. Yeah. 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 Um, and what if people, you know, got married under, is it Saria law? Uh, you know, I'm not sure which, which culture it's from, but, you know, I've heard of people who say, well, we can't get divorced because it's not recognized under our law. Lots of people, their the, the cultures don't permit them to, to get divorced. And in certain cultures, in fact, the wife cannot do it at all. It's the husband. If he ever wanted it, he is the only one who's allowed to say, I want to divorce. The wife is not even allowed to get the divorce. So yeah. lots of Far Eastern uh, countries, they have this law. So I think in UK, it's quite 
good in a way that we are both of the sides you're equal and it, it, when you go for a divorce it's easier in this country because uh, the, it's recognized that you know the it's the mother who's going to be taking care of the children or it's recognized that the, it doesn't matter what culture you're coming from you're both equal and you have to go to but in other countries it's very very hard in in india as well you know going to a divorce is really hard because no matter whether it's not your fault you're always going to be counted at fault and people okay. will talk about you i'll give an example of myself um i was married to an alcoholic and uh, when i started going to divorce his family knew that uh, obviously he has an alcohol problem we've been to rehabs and everything but as soon as we started going for divorce we went to a wedding and uh, the, the relatives, his side of the relatives sort of didn't want to know me. They didn't want to sit next to me. You almost become like an untouchable person kind of where you think, oh, don't, don't talk to her kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's the one who is going through a divorce. So it's, it's really horrible. But I'm fighting this. And I think most of us Asian women, we are fighting this cultural stigma. So hopefully, you know, we come out of it stronger. Yeah. So I... I referred on a client to you recently and you sent you you suggested that they got in touch with their immigration lawyer absolutely because as you know um the client was from india and they were married and they were living in a joint family so not only did they have a problem of where the husband was telling them to pay their share of the bills and the mortgage and everything. So there were four of them where two brothers and two wives. So the other brother was paying for his wife, but this particular guy wasn't helping his wife. They had issues in their marriage. And then she wanted to go for divorce. She was working here, but she didn't know what her situation would be. Would she be sent back to India or whatever it was? So I felt the need of an immigration solicitor then because they would be best person to advise the person as to what their rights were if they've been married here and they're struggling and they might be going through a divorce. Yeah. yeah. Lots of women come here and they face, uh, you're almost like a slave. You come here and you have to do all the housework, you go to work, you come back, they take your money away and you, you're doing all the household chores and the cooking and cleaning and everything and you're going to bed at 11 and still, you know, serving your husband as well. So it's a hard life. Yeah. See, I, I would never have thought about involving the immigration solicitor. And it, it makes perfect sense because they're the ones that know, you know, how easy it would be for them to get back to their family. No, absolutely. And I think with that particular woman, she was she was feeling that if she went back, her life Obviously, life is better here because she had a job and everything. And life, divorced person, if you're going back to your country, life can be really, really bad. And she's hoping there was a solution to remain here and continue working and paying the taxes and hopefully live a better life. Um, again, it's a matter of how long you've been married, I, I suppose. Yeah. Or an immigration solicitor can help you remain in this country, possibly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you want, you're obviously really enthusiastic and passionate about being a divorce coach what do you love most about your work i just i just love uh supporting and helping people and when i see them coming out on the other end stronger and they've come out of the divorce they're more confident they've started a new life i i just love that smile on their face and you know when we all go to divorce we think okay you're divorced now and you almost think it's over but it's not it's a beginning of your healing process isn't it yes so even after the divorce divorce coaches as a divorce coach i love supporting and helping them so whether it's to build a new career like myself i was not working and i had to go back to work or whether it's starting a small business from their own passion or even dating if some of my client one of my clients wanted to go into dating because she'd been with an uh, addicted person and she was ready to start dating i have to find the value she should be looking for in a partner the things that she should avoid in her yeah. because you don't want the same partner as before 
and again in styling you know uh, how to dress up what dangers to look out for when you're going for dating you know what what where you should park your car safely you should go to a public place uh, where there's enough light so all those different things i take my clients through so that they're aware of everything before they step out into the dating world because it's not the end of the life divorce is not the end of the life it's a new beginning it's a new absolutely chapter. absolutely and and I, community. I, I think so many people think because we have a title divorce coach that we're pro-divorce but we're not are we Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. I think because it's a, that's some of the people on LinkedIn are telling me, can you not change your title from divorce coach to something else? But I said, if I change my title, how are people who really need me going to find me? Yeah. So it's a matter of balancing the two, isn't it? That you want yeah, to be absolutely. pro divorce, but at the same time, I want people to find me, to understand what a divorce coach does. Because as you know, we, we sort of hold our clients' hands. We help them manage their emotions. We can help them look at their finances, the child care, uh, child plan, care plan aspect of it, and the healing side of things. You know how to get over the grieving. And there's, there's so much as divorce coaches we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I love, I love, I love them. I love when I see the smile and they're at the other end and they tell me, I've done it. I'm more confident. I've started a career or I've started this. So, you know, absolutely love it. Yeah, I think that's the most rewarding part when, yes. when you can see they're ready to go fly solo. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, 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 totally. Yeah. You know, just so, seeing them give you the testimonial and you think, wow, you know, what you're writing about me, I, I'm totally feeling humbled and honored. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So how can listeners get in touch with you? Uh, so they can contact me via my website, which is uh, varshahathi.com. Or my email address is varsha at varshahathi.com. And again, my phone number is 07742 and uh, hopefully I can support and help any people going through this because I understand the Asian culture, the community, the gold which goes with our marriages. And uh, please feel free to contact me. And uh, Sue, thank you for inviting me for this. Oh, thank you very much. It's been very enlightening for me. You know, I, I've learned a lot myself today. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put, I'll put Varsha's contact in the broadcast notes below the, the broadcast. So I'd like to say a big, big thank you for giving up your time to talk to Heart to Heart with us today at such a busy time. So as well as being a certified divorce coach, I was divorced myself at 50. So I've been in the same situation as you. Let me walk down the path with you as your thinking partner. Thank you for listening today. It's my prayer that this, will, this show helps you or someone in your life facing divorce reach out to us at www.divorce-doctor.com or find me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Thank you.